Hare Krishna Prabhu. Okay, it's 7.50, I suppose I'll start. Good um, okay. Uh, cartels will probably make too much feedback, so I'll just clap. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Jayam Vishnupad Parmahamsa Privajakacharya Stotra Satya Shishimad 
His divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Yeah. His Khan DVD founder, Chari, His divine grace, Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Chari Mahapad Paramahamsa Parivajakacharya Stotra Sattva Shri Shri Mahad, His divine grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj, Srila Prabhupada yeah. Kijai. Yeah. Anantakoti Vaishnava Vrinda Kijai. Yeah. Namacharya Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai. Prem se kaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopi Nath Shyama Kund Radha Kund Giri Govardhan Ki Jai Vrindavindam Ki Jai Maya Pordam Ki Jai Yamuna Mai Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tulasi Maharani Ki Jai Samaveda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Guru Ramha. Hare Krishna, everybody. Thank you so much for coming. Do we need it? Is, is the sound and audio all good? Yeah. That's okay. Good. Okay, today we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 6, Text 35 and 36. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, text 35 and 36. Canto 10, chapter 6, The Killing of the Demon Putana. Putana loka balagni rakshasi rudirashana. Jigam saya piharaye stanam datwa pasad gatim kim puna shradeya krishnaya paramatmane yachan priyatamam kim nu raktas tan mataro yata. I'll read it one more time. Putana lokabalagni rakshasi rudirashana. Jigam sayapi haraye stanam datva pasad katim kim puna shradaya bhaktya krishnaya paramatmane yachan priyatamam kim nu raktas tan mataro yata. Everyone else can read now. Putana loka bal balagrini rak. Rakshari Vrudhi Rashana Jigam Shai Yapi Haraye Stanam Dat Vapa Sadgatim Kimpuna Shraya Bhaktya Krishnaya Paramam Matmane Yachan Priyatmanam Kim Nu Raktastan Mataro Yata Putana Loka Balagni Rakshasi Rudi Rasana Jigam Sayapi Haraye Stanam Datwapa Satgatim Kim Puna Shradhaya Bhaktya Krishnaya Paramatmani Yachan Priyatamam Kim Nu Raktastan Mataro Yatha Puttana Taka Balagi Rakshashi Radisana Jinhasha Piharaya Tanyam Dwapa Satkatim Impuna Tadaya Bhakta Krishnaya Paramatmane Vacha Priyatamam Kimnu Raktatam Mataro Yata Utana Loka Balakni Rakshashi Rudirasana Jagam Shepi Harayi Satnam Stanam Datva Sadgatim Kimpuna Sadhya Bhaktya 
ವಿಷ್ಣಯ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ಯಚ್ಚಿಂ ಪ್ರೀತ ಪ್ರಿಯತಮ ಕಿಂ ನೋ ರಾಕ್ಷಸಿ ತನ್ಮತ್ರೋ ತನ್ಮಾತ್ರೋ ಯತ ಉತ್ತನಾಲೋಕ ಬಾಲಾಗ್ನಿ ರಾಕ್ಷಸಿ ರುದಿರಾಸನ ಜಿಂಧಾಸ್ಯಾಪಿ ಹರನೇ ನಮ್ ದಸ್ತವಾಪ ಸದ್ಗವತಿ ಕಿಂ ಪುನಾಶ್ರದಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಪರಮಾತ್ಮನೆ ಯಕ್ಷನ ಪ್ರಿಯತ ಕಿಂ ನೋ ರಕ್ತ ಅಸ್ತನ anyone else okay word for word translation putana putana the professional rakshasi lokabalagni who used to kill human children rakshasi the she demon rudira ashana simply hankering for blood jigam saya with the desire to kill krishna being envious of krishna and having been instructed by kamsa api still haraye unto the supreme personality of godhead stanam her breast dhatva after offering apa obtained satkatim the most elevated position of spiritual existence kim what to speak of puna again shraddhaya with faith bhaktiya by devotion krishnaya unto lord krishna paramatmane who is the supreme person yachan offering priyatamam the dear most kim something new indeed rakta those who have an affinity satchatara krishna's affectionate mothers offering the beloved child their breasts yata exactly like translation putana was always hankering for the blood of human children and with that desire she came to kill krishna but because she offered her breast to the lord she attained the greatest achievement what then is to be said of those who had natural devotion and affection for krishna as mothers and who offered him their breast to suck or offered something very dear as a mother offers something to a child purport by his divine grace shila prabhupad putana had no affection for krishna rather she was envious and wanted to kill him nonetheless because with or without knowledge she offered her breast she attained the highest achievement in life but the offerings of devotees attracted to krishna in parental love are always sincere a mother likes to offer something to her child with affection and love there is no question of envy so here we can make a comparative study if putana could have attained such an exalted position in spiritual life by neglectfully enviously making an offering to krishna what is to be said of mother yashoda and the other gopis who served krishna with such great affection and love offering everything for krishna's satisfaction the gopis automatically achieved the highest perfection therefore shri chaitanya mahaprabhu recommended the affection of the gopis either in maternal affection or in conjugal love as the highest perfection in life ramya kachid upasana rajavadu vargena ya kalpita uh verse again putana loka balagni rakshasi rudirasana jigam sayapi haraye stanam dattva pasadgatim kim punana shodaya bhaktya krishnaya paramatmane yachan priyatamam kim nu raktas tan matro yata putana was always hankering for the blood of human children and with that desire she came to kill krishna <clears throat> 
but because she offered her breast to the Lord, she attained the greatest achievement. What then is to be said of those who had natural devotion and affection for Krishna as mothers, and who offered him their breast to suck, or offered something very dear as a mother offers something to a child? Hare Krishna. Uh, so this is uh, quite an amazing pastime and quite an amazing event. Uh, to understand it also, we have to be a little careful when we're dealing with these uh, extraordinary personalities, these uh, huge, powerful uh, personalities. We can't always exactly copy their behavior. In the, uh, in the Rasa dance, Rasa Leela chapter of the Bhagavatam, Shukadev Goswami uh, speaks one verse. He says, Naitat Samatra Jatu Manasapi Hyanishwara Vinasyas Yacharan Modyad Yatarudo Yatarudrobdijam Visham. Uh, he's, the idea he's cautioning in that section where he's talking about the Rasa dance that we can't imitate the big, big Ishwaras, just like people want to imitate Krishna in his Rasa dance. And he says, those who are Ishwaras, they're special. Uh, we can't judge them by exactly the same standards as ourselves, and we certainly can't imitate them. And if you do try to imitate them, then, then you'll be ruined. Just like if you try to imitate Lord Shiva by drinking an ocean of poison, you'll become ruined. So we have to be a little careful understanding Putina. She's not, a, she's not an Ishwara. She's not a goddess, but she's this amazing, powerful personality uh, with you know, incredible powers and an incredible history and all of that. But still we learn from the, we still learn from the example of these, uh, these big, big people and big, big pastimes. Uh, so although we can't imitate, we can't like, uh, we can't imitate Lord Shiva drinking the ocean of poison or Prabhupada said like people want to imitate Lord Shiva the hippies by smoking ganja, but they're, but they'll become ruined. And even Krishna and even Srila Prabhupada, we can't always imitate everything, but we could learn the example from their lives. This is the distinction Srila Prabhupada made of Anusharana and Anukarana, that we follow in the footsteps, we don't blindly imitate. But still, this pastime is there, and it's uh, the things that shows us and tells us are really quite amazing. Putina was this amazingly powerful demon commissioned specifically by Kamsa and in a family of demons. She's also referred to as Baki because she's the sister of Bakasura. So she's this incredibly powerful and incredibly evil demon because really what, first of all, she's the first demon to attack Krishna, attack Krishna in Vrindavan. And how demonic is it to uh, want to kill and drink the blood of babies? We can't even imagine. Okay, you want to kill someone as awful as that is. That's, you know, that's uh, so awful. But to want to kill and drink the blood of babies is almost beyond comprehension. But she came to Vrindavan. And when she came, part of her evil and part of her power was that although being this disgusting monster, she was able to assume this beautiful, beautiful form, so attractive that everyone saw her and thought, oh, this must be the goddess of fortune come to Vrindavan to look for her husband, Narayan, because only such a person can be so beautiful. And Prabhupada even says in his purport that uh, everyone was bewildered by the uh, beauty of Putana when she came to Vrindavan, especially the men. Uh, so we could just imagine, or we can't imagine, but we could think about this horrible, horrible person, this horrible, horrible monster, but coming in this form so beautiful and bewildering everyone for her uh, evil plans. So here's this demon, the most evil demon imaginable with horrible motives and horrible activities and coming to do this terrible, terrible, terrible thing, but she got the greatest blessing in return. So this is so unimaginable. Uh, there's that uh, similar 
famous verse in the third canto, Aho bakiyam stanakalukutam jigam saye apya api yasadvi lebe gitim dakchuti tam tatonyam kam va dailum sharanam vrajema. said, where are you going to find a more merciful person than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna? He's so merciful that this demon Baki came to kill him by smearing poison on her breast and offering it to him. But because she made an offering to Krishna, Krishna delivered her and gave her, gave her a position, a position like the nurse. And nurse in Vedic concept means the wet nurse, who the woman who is not the biological mother, but offers her breast to feed the child. And we know also from Chanaka Pandit that the nurse is, is one of the seven mothers. Ado Mata, what's the uh, Brahmini? Anyway, and Dhatri, nurse, is one of those seven mothers. So he, so Krishna, this terrible, terrible demon, but because she offered her breast, Krishna said, oh, she's offering breast, she's my mother. Okay, I have to kill her because that's the, the pastime and that's what she deserves and to protect the rest of the world and as punishment for her sins. So I'm going to kill her, but because she offered her breast, I'm going to give her this gift that she can attain the position of being like my mother. And this mercy of Krishna is, uh, this is such an astounding thing. That verse is also quoted in connection with, uh, who's the devotee in Lord Chaitanya's pastime? Pundarik, who heard that verse, he was, he was appearing like a materialistic person and Gadadhar Pandit had some doubts about his spiritual position. And when Pundarik heard this verse, he went mad with ecstasy, thinking about how merciful Krishna is. So Krishna has all opulences and all powers and all beauty and everything, but he's also the most merciful. And come by Dayalun Sharanam Vrajema, how could you why would how could you find a person more merciful than this? to whom to surrender. So therefore surrender to Krishna. So this is uh, Krishna's mercy. And we as devotees know, or we should know, that we need Krishna's mercy. We need a lot of mercy. We need a lot of mercy for two reasons. One, because our own position is so lowly. And two, because the goal we're aspiring for is so high. If you're walking up a flight of stairs, you don't need that much assistance. If you're climbing to the top of Mount Everest, you need a lot of assistance. Or if you're learning your ABCs, you don't need that much assistance. But if you want to get a doctorate at the university, university, you need a lot of assistance because the goal is so high. And the goal that we're aspiring to is so high to attain Krishna, love of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Supreme Personality of Godhead means he's the highest absolute truth in existence. And we're aspiring that. Our lowly selves are aspiring for that. So how much mercy do we need to attain the bhakti necessary for that? And we need that bhakti. Bhakti mama bijanati yavanyas chasmi tatvata tatomam tatvatil gyatva vishite tadanantaram that if you want to understand Krishna in truth, if you want to attain Krishna, then bhakti is the, the only method to do that. And to attain Krishna, to attain the spiritual world, bhakti is the only method. <clears throat> and there are so many spiritual paths. There's these different yogas and this yoga and that yoga and this meditation and that. But all of those will not take you to the highest realization of Krishna and the highest love of Krishna. That realization of Krishna, Prabhupada said, is called Durgyaya. It's the most difficult realization to realize Krishna in his personal form in Vrindavan and attain love for him. And all those other things, yoga and yogic cities and attaining uh, the uh, Brahma Jyoti and all these things, which seem very amazing to us, but these are all called sugya. They're very easy uh, revelations or attainments. Even you could say cheap attainments compared to the attainments of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So how much mercy uh, do we need 
to understand Krishna in truth, to attain Krishna, to develop love for Krishna. So what is that mercy? What's the mercy that we need? What are we looking for when we're looking for mercy? Uh, here's a few negative examples of mercy. This is a story Prabhupada told, recounted by His Holiness, Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami. That he tells the story that there was a ashram and the guru of the ashram was running the ashram and he was living there with his disciples. And the guru was going out, decided to go out on a preaching tour. And he, said, and he told his head disciple, manage the ashram while I'm away, make sure everything's taken care of, I'm going on a preaching tour. So the guru goes out and he's away preaching, traveling all over the place, preaching for, uh, preaching for some months. And he comes back to the ashram and he's greeted at the gate by his disciple who he left in charge. And he sees the gate is all newly renovated and decorated. And the gate to the ashram is, has a beautiful new cast iron gate and decorated very beautifully. And the guru says, wow, this is so nice that you've done this. How are you able to make these nice improvements? And the disciple said, oh, Guru Maharaj, it's, it's all by your mercy, Guru Maharaj. And then he went in the ashram and he saw the buildings were all renovated and everything was friendly, freshly painted and all repairs are made. And the, again, the guru is so pleased and said, oh, this is so nice. How have you done these nice improvements? And again, oh, Guru Maharaj, it's only by your mercy. And he saw toward the old grounds and he saw new gardens planted and everything renovated in first class and improved in every way. And again, he was so pleased and the disciples said, oh, Guru Maharaj, it's only all by your mercy. So then the uh, guru of the ashram went to his office and he was, uh, and he, all the money he had, he had collected some donations during his preaching tour. So he got out his bank book to make out the deposit slips for the money he had collected. And he saw that the bank account for the ashram was at zero. And so he called his disciple and said, what happened? What happened to all the money in the bank? And the disciple said, oh, Guru Maharaj, it's all your mercy. We took the money to make the improvements. So this is not really the Guru's mercy that you take away like that. <clears throat> so that's one story Prabhupada told. Um, let's see now. Oh, there, so here's another kind of misunderstanding of mercy. This is a story that Prabhupada would occasionally tell about a big cheating guru from India. Uh, one of the most popular of the, of the cheaters there. And one time this cheating guru uh, touched his cheating disciple and the cheating disciple felt an electric shock in his body and he passed out unconscious. And when he woke up, his guru was crying. And he said, the, the cheating disciple said to the cheating guru, what happened? Why are you crying? And he said, oh, by this electric shock, I've transmitted to you all of my spiritual shock to you, and now I have none left, so I'm crying. So this kind of foolishness, you know, some kind of, I think they call shakti pot that you touch and you make some magical transference. This is also not the, kind of mercy that we're looking for or that we're after. Or another nice story that uh, Hari Sori Prabhu tells in his uh, Transcendental Diaries. Prabhupada was traveling around India preaching and they were traveling by train. <clears throat> and actually it's very nice. One of the officials of the uh, train company had given Prabhupada his own private car. And so they were traveling like that. And wherever they went, people uh, Indian people always wanted to come and see the Swami and get the, get the blessings of the Swami. And Prabhupada was not usually very, although he was always merciful to people and always willing to give his time to people, he knew the kind of blessings that people wanted. So uh, let me see. I don't have the exact text here. But anyway, uh, so the secretaries were always guarding Prabhupada's train, not letting people in indiscriminately. But somehow these three Indian gentlemen snuck into Prabhupada's train car, uh, got past the secretary and got in and offered obeisances and bowed down and said to Prabhupada, oh, Swamiji, give us your blessings. And Prabhupada said, what is that blessing? 
And one of the men said, well, I have this pain in my leg and maybe you can do something about it. And Prabhupada was, he didn't say anything, but he uh, made an unpleasant face at that. And the disciples who were there were practically groaning out loud hearing this. So the, the Indian man knew he had misspoken. He said, well, uh, I also want to take care of my, I need to uh, give me your blessing that I could take care of my family. And again, that was another not satisfactory answer. And then he said, well, I also want to do good to people. And then Prabhupada's response was, you want my blessings? And he indicated all the disciples with him. I think at least some of them, if not all of them, were sannyasis. And he said, you see them wearing saffron with neck beads, with tilak. These young boys have given up everything to serve Krishna. This is my blessing. You do that. And the men stammered something and ran away. So these are what mercy isn't. That it's not some magic touch, some magic that will uh, make us spiritual or make us pure without our endeavor. And it's not some material commodity. So here's, a, here's another story uh, from the Lila Mrita. <clears throat> and we can use it to examine what mercy actually is. This is from early, very early in 26 Second Avenue. <clears throat> it is now nine o'clock. The audience sits before Swamiji while a boy brings him an apple, a small wooden bowl, and a knife. As most of the audience still has been, as I'm sorry, as most of the audience still sits and watches, gauging the after effects of the chanting as though it had been some new drug, the Swami cuts the apple in half, then in fourths, then in eighths, until there are many pieces. He takes one himself and asks one of the boys to pass the bowl around. Swamiji holds back his head and deftly pops a slice of apple into his mouth without touching his fingers to his lips. He chews a bit, ruminating, his lips closed. <clears throat> the members of the congregation munch silently on little pieces of apple. Prabhupada stands, slips into his shoes, and exits through the side door. Now, I doubt that those uh, young boys back in 1965 or 1966 had much awareness of what it meant to receive a piece of apple from Srila Prabhupada's hands. But those of us now can understand it a little bit. And what wouldn't we give for the opportunity now today to receive to be there with Prabhupada cutting up a piece of apple and receive a little piece of cut apple from Prabhupada's hands. What wouldn't we give for such mercy? And what is, what is, what's the mercy of that? Why is that mercy? Well, Prabhupada is uh, offering to these boys food offered to Krishna. Food offered to Krishna, of course, is called prasad, which also means mercy. And when we honor prasad, what's happening? There's some food, some ordinary mundane foodstuffs, which is cooked, prepared, and assembled, and offered to Krishna. And by that offering to Krishna, Krishna accepts it, Krishna tastes it, and that food now becomes prasad, spiritual food, as spiritual, identically, uh, spiritually identical with Krishna himself. And then when we taste that food and honor that food, we're accepting Krishna. We're tasting Krishna with our tongue, jiva. And what's it, one definition of devotional service? Atakshi Krishna namadi, nabavet grayam indriyai sevan mukehi jiva do, swayam eva spurat yada. That with these senses, with this material senses, with this material mind, we cannot approach Krishna at all. But if we take those same material senses and material mind, those senses jivado beginning with the tongue and if we use that in the service of krishna the tongue by tasting prasad by speaking about krishna by chanting the ears by hearing the the body by serving the mind by thinking all of those things engaged in krishna's service then it actually becomes possible to attain krishna through the use of those things through the use of the mind body and senses so this is the mercy when Prabhupada was distributing those apple slices. This is the mercy he was doing. He was giving these boys an opportunity, the opportunity to taste Krishna, 
to contact Krishna. When he was chanting, that's what he was doing. He was giving them that opportunity. Another time back in 22nd Avenue, uh, one slightly, either, either he was, had some mental problems or maybe he was just intoxicated at one of Prabhupada's talks at 22nd Avenue. And he kept on saying to Swamiji, but what about my mind? What about my mind? And Prabhupada tried to offer so many things. And finally he said, I, I have nothing else to offer but this Krishna consciousness, but this Maha Mancha, please take it. I have no other solution. I have nothing else to offer. So this is the mercy that Prabhupada was offering, this opportunity here. Take this Harinam Maha Mantra and chant it. This will give you everything. He can't, Prabhupada can't chant for us, but he could give us this opportunity to chant. One other story, just because it was on my mind from those early days that I'll tell. There was one, a very, very early person coming to Srila Prabhupada. His name was Lan Solomon. Some of you may know him as Prabhupada Das. Now he's a sannyasi. I don't know what his full sannyas name is, but hmm? I know his name was Prabhupada Das. Anyway, he, uh, so this he became Prabhupada Das. But at the time, he was kind of hippie and kind of outside and a little bit holding back. He was so he loved Srila Prabhupada, but he was a little shy or reluctant or unwilling to surrender at those early times. So one time he came to visit Swamiji and Prabhupada took a dhoti and held it out in his hand to him, to Lan Solomon, and said, please take this and come and stay. And he, and he had a tear in his eye, offering it to Prabhupada Das. And he wasn't ready and he backed off and he left. And so this is the mercy. Prabhupada had this mercy. He was offering, please, please come and take this. Please take this Krishna consciousness, practically begging. And at that time, he wasn't ready. Now, Prabhupada is such, he's a really wonderful devotee. He's, I, he's preaching in Central America, South America now, I think. And he's very a uh, great devotee and a nice person and very learned scholar. But anyway, at that time, Prabhupada was offering, this is the mercy, please come and take it. <clears throat> so this is, the, uh, this is the mercy that Prabhupada and Krishna and the devotees are coming and giving us an opportunity. Take this, take this holy name, do this service, read this Shastra, do all these things. And if you do that, then you'll develop bhakti. And bhakti mama bijanati yavinyas chasmi tattvata then this is the mercy that allows us to attain the very highest uh, position of all pure devotion to Krishna. So, so this happens when we get initiated. To be initiated is an act of mercy and it's an offering. Here's your beads. It's an offering of the beads and we have to take them and the realization of that mercy is to only take those beads and we chant. And when we recite those four regular principles and we follow them, but it's all an offering, it's offered to us and we take it. So this is how we advance in Krishna consciousness, that Guru, Sadhu and Shastra and Krishna himself offer us opportunity after opportunity after opportunity. And if we recognize it for what it is, and if our desire to advance is strong enough, then we take that opportunity and we advance. And again, we need so much mercy in so many ways to advance in Krishna consciousness. But the power of mercy is such that even just a drop, a tiny drop of that mercy is so amazing. There's a story in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. <clears throat> I think it, it was right after the Gundicha Marjana pastimes. And after they finished cleaning the temple, <clears throat> Lord Chaitanya and all the devotees went out to one garden nearby and were swimming in the Indrajumna Lake. And these are all, you know, old men, old men or adults and, you know, grave, serious people. But they were in the water and they were jumping and splashing and fighting, play fighting and splashing and having fun and playing just like children. And specifically, Lord Chaitanya, and even they were having like, uh, splashing fights 
And then Sarvabal Mabhattacharya and Ramananda Roy were having a splashing fight. And Lord Chaitanya sort of mock criticized him. He said, what is this? These, these two very serious, very grave old men. Sarvabal Mabhattacharya was the advisor to the king and Ramananda Roy was like a governor or some big position. So they both had big political positions and they both had a, were great scholars and very serious and grave men. And Lord Chaitanya says, stop this. You're acting like you're both very grave, serious men and you're acting just like children. What is this? And one devotee, Gopinatacharya said, let's see if I can find that. Ah, Gopinatakahi. Tomara Kripa Maha Sindhu, Uchalita Kare Yabe Tara Eka Bindu. And Gopinatacharya said to Lord Chaitanya, they're acting like this because they're overwhelmed just by having received a single drop of your mercy. And then Gopinatacharya went on to explain that mercy of yours is so incredible and so powerful. <clears throat> And even just a single drop of that mercy of yours is enough to drown Mount Meru and Mount, uh, what's uh, Mount Meru and uh, I met, mentioned another big mountain. Uh, all these big, oh, the Amandara mountain that was churned by the uh, demons and demigods. That just a drop of that mercy is like an ocean that could submerge these big, big mountains. So if we could get just a drop of that mercy, if we could receive an instruction, a little instruction from Krishna, a little instruction from our spiritual master, a little instruction from the Shastra, and if we could accept that mercy and follow it sincerely and seriously, then there's so much amazing benefit to be had because just a drop of that mercy can give so much later on in the 10th canto in the prayers of uh, Lord Brahma's prayers, Lord Brahma says, Atapi te deva padam buja doya, prasada le shanu grihita evahi, janati tatvam bhagavan mahim no, nachanya eko picharam vichinvan. This is Lord Brahma when he had come to his senses. He says, uh, if one can get just a drop Prasada Lesha. Lesha means like, a, like an atom, like an atomic particle of prasad, of your mercy, of the mercy of Krishna's two lotus feet. Then Janati Tatvam Bhagavan Mahim No means then you could understand in truth the glories of Lord Krishna. Just like in that Bhagavad Gita verse was, uh, what's that? Uh, Yavanyas chasmi patvata, same idea that you by this you could understand Krishna in truth. And this is Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma, who knew all the Vedas in full. He has four heads to understand the four Vedas. And he's so learned and so expert that he's creating the entire universe. But he still requires Krishna's mercy and just a drop of that mercy. And what was the mercy? Krishna offered him the mercy. He was displaying his pastimes, which is his mercy to come to this world and display his pastimes. And Lord Brahma saw it and he didn't accept the mercy at first. He saw it and he said, oh, what's this Krishna? I'm gonna steal away the cowherd boys and calves to test him. So he didn't, Krishna was offering the mercy and Lord Brahma didn't accept it. He had to be bewildered and humiliated first and then he was able to accept that mercy and understand a little bit uh, Krishna's position. Then he could understand his position and then his bhakti to Krishna could develop and grow. He didn't uh, get, Krishna didn't give him an electric shock or snap his fingers like, and now you're Krishna conscious. No, he offered him opportunity more than once. He offered opportunity. And then finally Lord Brahma came to his senses. So uh, there's so many examples like that. Um, it's uh, 8.30, we'll wrap it up very uh, quickly here. One last point, Krishna can do anything. He's the Supreme Personality of God. There's nothing that he cannot do. Uh, but yet at the same time as Prabhupada explained, he doesn't touch our free will. 
because if he would manipulate our free will to make us into devotees, then we wouldn't be devotees, we would be obedient robots. And Krishna wants love and love has to be free and love has to be ultimately spontaneous. So, but yet at the same time, he wants so much more than anything to help us, to make us into devotees because of how we're suffering without it and how he is uh, longing for our devotion also. So the only solution to that is this offering of an opportunity. Here, take this. This is Krishna's mercy to all, to everyone. Here, take this, chant this holy name, associate with the devotees, practice Krishna consciousness. This is how Krishna offers his mercy, yet preserves our free will by offering these opportunities that we take. And hopefully we take more and more and more. Uh, and that's how we advance in Krishna consciousness. Uh, one last item, this is from uh, Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. And I'll share it just because it's a nice statement about mercy. He says, the quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth, blesseth him that gives and him that takes. The mightiest in the mightiest it becomes. The throned monarch better than his crown. His scepter shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above this sceptered sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods. So this is very nice. This mercy droppeth like the gentle rain, just like the rain is falling. The rain falls from the sky and it falls on everyone and everyone benefits from it. But if you stay inside, you won't get the rain. You won't be touched by the rain. But it's there, it's there for everyone and it's falling on everyone. No one is excluded from that. Uh, it droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the blaze beneath. It is twice blessed because it blesseth him that gives and him that takes. So when we accept the mercy of the Krishna and the devotee, we're blessed. And if we have a little bit of Krishna consciousness ourselves, even if it's just a drop, and if we offer that opportunity to someone else, then by giving that mercy, by giving that opportunity, we're also equally blessed. And it's the greatest power, greater than the, he says, the mighty, in the mightiest, it is the mightiest. It's better than the throne scepter and the awe and reverence of the king. It's, uh, it's the quality coming from God himself, this quality of mercy. So every day, literally at every step, we're given opportunities to be Krishna consciousness. And the more we train ourselves and practice ourselves to accept that responsibility, the more and more we can advance. Thank you very much, Hare Krishna. I hope I didn't go too long. If there's any questions or comments, that would be nice. Oh, Haribo Prabhu. I have one Haribar. question. Thank you very okay. much for giving a nice explanation about mercy. So we know we have been hearing mercy in all Prabhupada books and by the devotee and everything. How do we keep reminding ourselves like in a daily, day-to-day -day life that everything is the mercy of Krishna or whatever? So, because sometimes we forgot, we just keep on going with our regular routine. We forgot how, how, how everything is happening by the mercy of devotees, of Vaishnava, of Krishna. And uh, can you please, and also I have another uh, question. I just lost my uncle and I have to help, uh, you know, my aunt to, to grieve. So I all had to put, you know, Continuous chanting of the holy name. Any other way you can help them help the soul? Okay, to, um, I'll I'll address the second question first. Okay. For someone who lost a dear one, I don't know if that person's a devotee. How much a devotee they are, but one of the one of the they're not like best a practicing devotee, but. You know, like a regular Hindu belief. Then the main thing, the main thing w would be to just be kind and supportive and helpful to whatever degree you can, because it's a, 
that's such, you know, I could only imagine that such a difficult thing for that person. And we want to be kind and we want to be helpful. And if there's some opportunity to say something about Krishna consciousness that's related in a comforting way, or to offer some prasad, or, for, or to offer some other Krishna conscious uh, angle, that's good. But it, to someone in such a, a delicate state and such a distressful state, you mainly want to be helpful and supportive. And as for the first question, how to how to see it all the time? I don't have like a a trick or a you know a gimmick or something how to see it all the time, except that the more we do it, if we practice ourselves, if we see if something happens and we do have the opportunity to think, oh, this is mercy. This is an opportunity for me to uh, do something Krishna conscious and benefit. The more we do that, then and we see the results of that, then the more we'll see, and the more we'll see those opportunities because those opportunities are everywhere. Actually, you could you could see literally everything that we know. Everything is Krishna's mercy because every moment provides an opportunity for us to uh, advance in Krishna consciousness, or if we neglect the opportunity to not do so. Also, what we could do is any kind of regulation especially the regulation that Prabhupada offered, like a, a, it's so hard to do now, but uh, you know, a morning class, regular japa time, regular reading time, those type of things will also help us to uh, always, see, always see things as Krishna's mercy and as opportunities for us to advance. But other Thank than you. that, I don't really have like a trick or anything like that. It's just part of our growth in Krishna consciousness that we can focus on. Is that all right? Thank you very much. Good explanation. Ram Kumar has a, a question. Um, Go ahead. Can I? Prabhu, Danwat Pranam, Prabhupada. A little bit louder, please, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Prabhu, Danwat Pranam, please accept my humble obeisances. So, this is Ram. So, Prabhu, uh, like, it's a wonderful lecture. Yeah, and it's nicely described everything. You uh, started with, I mean, so initially, like, uh, in the beginning, people imitate Krishna in the Rasa dance. Uh, similarly, Lord Shiva, uh, people imitate for, you know, drinking the, uh, the, the poison, and uh, they, they, they imitate saying that the, he drinks uh, some unwanted things, uh, you know, like, and uh, and uh, you quoted uh, that bhaktam mam abhiyanati so that was really wonderful uh, you know like sa bhaktam mam abhiyanati yamanas cha asmi tatvata tato mam bhaktato jatva disate tadantaram so to coming uh, to this uh, uh, purport Prabhuji, when we come to the purport uh, Prabhupada Maharaj quotes uh, here one, uh, one Ramya Kachit Upasana Brajabandhu Barjan Barjaniya Kalpita. So, Prabhuji, I, I, I was trying to understand about that if you can explain a bit more. So, I was going through Prabhupada lectures. So, he says, like, uh, uh, this is uh, by uh, Srinath Chakravarti, disciple of Adyata Prabhu. He uh, quoted this one. Aradhyo Bhagavan Brajes Tanyas Taddham Brindavan Ramya Kachid Upasana Brajabandhu Barjane Ya Kalpita Sastram Bhagavatam Paramana Amalam Prema Pumartha Maha Sri Chaitanya Maha Prabhur Mataha Idam Tadar Taro Naparaha. So here in this uh, the Krishna worshipable Lord is, I mean, the worshipable Lord is Krishna, the son of King Nanda of Braja, the abode of, in which he worship, uh, worship him is the Vrindavan. Vrindavan. The delightful method of worship is that of the cowherd wives of Braja. So this point probably is significant, cowherd wives of Braja the gopis. So, cowherd wives of Braja, 
as a gopis so i am not uh, uh, i am not so uh, understandable of this and just i want your clarification prabhu ji and i am not trying to imitate here like how gopis are uh, you know wife uh, of krishna uh, for my clarification for my doubt i i want to understand prabhu ji if you can bit give light so it will be good for me to understand better way how gopis are here referred as uh, you know wife of krishna is it in the bhav of the uh, you know uh, prema bhav uh, vats prema bhav or something like that yeah prabhu ji okay uh, first of all i'm not i'm not 100% sure that raju vadu means that they're being referred to as the wives of krishna raju vadu as far as i understand Prabhupada says in today's purport that it refers to both the young gopis and the elderly gopis, and Raja, I think, just means the women of Raja. So it could refer to the the married elderly gopis, or it may refer to the uh, the unmarried young gopis. Uh, the point being that the gopis are the this that that whole verse that you quoted is giving the best of everything. what's the most worshipable krishna is the most worshipable the method the best method of worshiping him is that done by the gopis of vrindavan and the best the best scripture is shrimad bhagavatam so uh, i don't think it's necessarily describing them as uh, wives of krishna as far as them being wives of krishna that's a little off topic but sometimes that's described in a uh sort of unofficial way just like in the uh vastaharana leela where krishna steals the clothes of the gopis there was no formal marriage but prabhupada says that only the husband gets to see the wife undressed so because krishna stole the gopis clothes he's like their husband and then there are past times where there are other you know past times in vrindavan about mar- sort of unofficial or semi official marriage ceremonies but that's a little bit off topic for now. Prabhu, I don't know if that I don't know if that satisfies what you are after. But yeah, thank you Prabhu, thank you Prabhu ji for clarifying at least uh, this much is added to me I was not knowing. So yeah, it 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 clarifies Prabhu ji. Hare Krishna. Thank you Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Any anyone else? Acharya Prabhu, I don't know how to yes, raise sir. my hand. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I um I just love the class. I uh, I really want to thank you for participating like this because you took a situation which was um so brutal where Krishna were intently um Putna was trying to poison, trying to kill Krishna. And you you saw you turned that around to the mercy of Krishna. How Krishna I didn't do it. Krishna did it. Yeah. <laughs> you know and how krishna's mercy was there and then you begin to elaborate on that mercy of, of of krishna's and the agency of that mercy through the spiritual master so it was really really um moving to me to see that benediction how that actually exists for us my my question is is that often times we are engaged in 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 the mission of the spiritual master and we're enthusiastic and we go for it at some point i don't know if it's due to some offenses we commit if it's due to a weakness of heart that we had but the intensity of receiving of taking that mercy because it's there but we got to take it <laughs> and it's it appears to go away my point is is it a problem on, on our side or is it krishna uh making an arrangement to let that that greed developed so that we undergo the process of uh, receiving his mercy uh that's a tricky question in one sense and i can't give a straightforward answer because everything is being arranged by krishna so that's undoubtedly true that krishna's aware of everything that's going on and at the same time we were responsible for our own spirit this is like i said this is the point sort of the point of what mercy is that krishna is helping and doing everything but at the same time 
our free will and our initiative is preserved. So I can't give a straightforward answer, except that if something's, if something is lacking in our Krishna consciousness, even if we think, or even if it's true that Krishna is making it harder on us for this reason or that reason, that does not absolve us, absolve us of our responsibility to do everything we can to uh, practice Krishna consciousness. Uh, since I, I'll tell a, a little story here, uh, because I was thinking of His Holiness Bhakti True Swami because he's in the hospital. And I met him once and I was talking to him and he told me something very, that at the time was very astounding. And he said that in the long run, we were talking about uh, how devotees, even devotees who are very close to Prabhupada would sometimes give up and go away. And he was saying in the long run, in the very long run, you know, we don't know, but all those things can be seen as part of a person's long-term growth over many years or even over lifetimes. So that sort of supports the side that, you know, Krishna's in charge in making arrangements. And even when it seems like something bad, it could be something for our growth. Yet at the same time, we have to be careful of that, say, oh, I'm in Maya now, I guess Krishna is making an arrangement for me to, for me to, you know, do this, that, and the other sinful things. So in the long run, my, I'll advance. So we can't use that as an excuse, of course. But at, but at the same time, Krishna is making all sorts of arrangements and uh, Krishna's got the, uh, Krishna's playing the long game. He's got, he's got the long vision. He sees what's going to happen over years and over centuries and over lifetimes that we may not have the vision of. But we still have to remember at the same time, right here and right now, we can't make excuses. We have to take responsibility. Is yeah. that okay? Yeah. I, I, and I want you to know that it, it wasn't a curveball from my perspective. I feel that most of us are somewhat sincere at a certain point. Just like when Arjuna finally approached Krishna for Pandya to Shobhava. You know, he, he diagnosed his problem. So he was some, somewhat sincere. But it appears to me at a certain point that that intensity of our sincerity gets lost and we lose that. We lose the, we, it appears that we're really losing that mercy that we, that we think we want. That, that was my, my real point. Um, it's there, but somehow we lose our intensity. And I'm not sure, yeah. you know, where it comes from, but I, I thank you. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Anything else? Hi, Krishna Acharya Prabhu. Very Hi, wonderful. Prabhu. It's very, very, very nice, very nice lecture. Um, sometimes in our neophyte stage, devotees, uh, we become, I guess you could say, judgmental in determining another devotee's destination. Um, maybe sometimes uh, we'll see a Prabhupada disciple and we'll think like, oh, what happened to that person? You know. Um, maybe they'll leave their body and then they'll think like, okay, well, you know, maybe that person's not going to go back to Godhead or we may see somebody else and make judge, you kind of form judgments about people based on what we can perceive from our senses of what is going on in their lives. Um, it's not a healthy thing to do. Um, but I'm looking at this particular case of Putina, which is like probably the most extreme case you could probably right. get where people would say, oh, wow, she's going to suffer for millions of lifetimes in hell for all the atrocities that she's performed. Um, maybe just some words of, of caution or wisdom for, you know, the Krishna can kind of <laughs> turn everything around if he so yeah. desires. Um, yeah, I'll say a couple of things about that. I don't know, nothing like conclusive, but I'll, I have a couple of thoughts on it. First of all, criti criticizing, especially someone who's passed away, is just in, that's just bad taste. That's just not something. You just, you just don't want to, do, you don't want to do that. Uh, even they may have been faulty. They may have been whatever. 
I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else that in that same discussion with His Holiness Bhakti True Swami that I mentioned a few minutes ago, he also said about that, about devotees falling away. He said, we never want to criticize or kick away a devotee, even if they're fallen. And he, then he said, but the one exception to that is someone who's actively causing harm to ISKCON. So we don't want to, we, we can't, you know, put on necessarily put on rose colored glasses and think that someone who's acting in a fallen way is actually very elevated. Uh, we don't have to do that, but we have to treat everyone with respect. We have to treat everyone with mercy to, you know, treat them nicely and give them opportunities in such a way that even if there is some fault in their behavior, they can take up Krishna consciousness again. Um, on, and on the other hand, uh, it's also kind of true that when someone dies, everyone says, oh, we went back to Godhead. And we don't know. So we don't want to sugarcoat it, but even more important than that, we don't want to be overly critical. So even, even just like when, uh, uh, when, uh, oh, geez, my mind is going blank. Uh, Jayananda, when Jayananda Prabhu passed away, Prabhupada wrote one letter and he said, oh, Jayananda Prabhu passed away. And I, I don't have the letter in front of me. So this is from memory. Uh, he passed away, but because he practiced devotional service, he'll either go back to Godhead or he'll get an elevated next birth, maybe in the heavenly planet, something like that. And then a little while after that, he wrote another letter and said, oh, he was a devotee because he was chanting Hare Krishna. He surely went back to Godhead. So even Prabhupada, you know, like I said, we all say someone passed away. Oh, we went back to Godhead. And we don't know where they went. We, it's not our job to know. Uh, and we wish the best for everyone. And we want to speak well of everyone. So we don't want to sugarcoat it. But we especially even more so don't want to uh, criticize. Is that uh, yeah. helpful at all? Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. What's that? Uh, what's that? Uh, pastime with was it Ramachandra Puri, who was always criticizing, and uh, then the statement was made that one should neither praise nor criticize, and then Lord Chaitanya explained that actually it means you should praise but not criticize, but Ramachandra, Ramachandra Puri took the opposite that you should criticize but not praise. So better. So the standard is neither praise nor criticize, but really you should praise, but not criticize. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? I have a request. Okay. That you come back. Uh, I can do it on, a, on, week, on an upcoming weekend, possibly. We'll see what the schedule You'll be scheduled for July. <laughs> okay, Hare Krishna. And I'll just say one last thing. Uh, everyone who's here, just the fact that we're here means that we were offered amazing mercy and we, and we took at least some of it. Just the fact of our being here uh, tells us that. So that's something to, you know, maybe something encouraging to remember. Okay. Yeah. Thank Jai, you. Krishna. Thank you very okay. much. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada. Just a couple quick announcements um, coming up today. We have our Sunday program. Um, uh, His Grace Church Anjur Prabhu will be giving class. Uh, we'll be broadcasting the RT starting at 4 o'clock. Class is at 4.30. And then at 5.30, we will have a Go Puja, a Cow Puja from Gita Nagari. So uh, it's kind of Philadelphia. We've had a couple of generous donors that have sponsored cows at Gita Nagari, which will be supplying our Philadelphia community and uh, Shishi Radhashar Bihari uh, with uh, a hymns of milk from Gita Nagari. So Gita Nagari comes on, sat on Sundays to deliver the milk. Um, those who have signed up for milk, um, you know, know when to pick it up. Uh, but anyway, as part of the kind of inauguration ceremony of, of this program, there's a name giving ceremony to the cows where the cows are giving you know, a spiritual name and there's a go puja that's done. It takes about 40 minutes 
45 minutes to do. So that will be broadcast right after the Sunday Feast lecture. Um, so those want to kind of connect deeper with this uh, kind of farm to city initiative, um, cow protection initiative, um, please join, please um, prepare to stay a little longer for that this evening. Um, also coming up Monday evening, Pariyashra Prabhu and Balabhadra Prabhu will be giving part two of their, their, um, their, their uh, 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 discussion dialogue on this, on, on this topic of race, uh, awesome. racial um, injustice, discre discrepancies, and letting devotees talk about it um, in a form that is uh, sometimes we just don't get a chance to do um, other times. So um, again, that's 7.30, same Zoom channel, Monday evening. And um, as we close out today, uh, we'd like to offer up a prayer um, for His Holiness Bhakti Chu Maharaj, um, Acharya Prabhu, you um, spoke nicely about Maharaj today and some of his, you brought, you, you brought him into the, into the lecture, which was very, very sweet. Uh, would you like to, would you like to offer a prayer? Uh, uh, I, I, I don't know what to say. We're all, we're all praying for him and, and asking Krishna's assistance. I, I don't, I have nothing special to add to that. We all want the best for him. He's an amazing devotee. Uh, the, one of the sweetest devotees and, and, you know, we want him well. And last I've heard is that things are reservedly positive in his prognosis. So I'm hoping and praying and wishing for the best. And I'm sure all devotees are. Thank you. We can, um, uh, Vrindavan Eshwari, do you have anything else to, there's some things out there about Maharaj's health condition, but being a disciple, maybe you have some more um, insight or more information than, than what we have. Sure, sure. So we get updates every 12 hours. Um, and uh, at this point, they, uh, Maharaj, uh, Guru Maharaj is in critical condition. Still, um, he's still on the ventilator. Um, you know, the, the, uh, the formal update is that he has an infection, but they are working to address the infection and they are working on the milestone of trying to um, get him off of the ventilator. But he's, he's in critical condition, but he is stable as the, the medical team is, is saying. So they're just, they're working on a couple of critical, critical things right now that require extra prayers. So we just ask that everyone please continue to pray for, um, for Bhakti Churu Swami for uh, coming through this and um, if Krishna so desires that he may keep us with us for much, much longer so that he continues to serve Srila Prabhupada and, and bring more and more, uh, more and more people to the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and, and Sri Krishna. So that's our prayer. So thank you. For thank you. So we'll conclude with chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra three times, and then we can, can end the meeting. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. All right. Thank you, Acharya Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, you're welcome. Thank All you. Glories thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. I had a great Thank time. you so much, Acharya Prabhu, for a wonderful lecture. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Hare Krishna.